Hey there, how's it going? My name is David. Welcome back to Kaya City RC and one of my semi-regular RC garage updates, basically a vlog, what I've been up to in the hobby. So if that doesn't really interest you, there's no reviews today. Uh, if it's not interesting, just feel free to ba bail out. Um, before we get going, a uh, bit of an apology. I've not really been uploading much so far this year. In all honesty, I've just not had the motivation to do so. Um, I spent most of my winter holidays sat behind a computer editing one thing and another and I just felt like I needed a break, hence the rather lack of updates videos from me so far this year. Anyway, I digress. Uh, so what's on the bench? Why is it on the bench? Well, in the middle we have my DTO2 MS. Tonight will be the final of this uh, season. So um, DTO2, DTO3 cup held at Conosa RC Park. If you are new here, I'll put a link in the description below to previous race videos, highlights. Um, if you have been following the channel for a while, you know I had a few problems with my MS on the last outing, which I believe was December or January time. Um, right after qualifying, I noticed I uh, got a big split in the chassis here, which wasn't too bad. More concerning though was the gearbox casing was cracked right where the hinge pins for the rear suspension mount. Um, that would mean changing gearboxes. I did have a spare gearbox case, but it, it's quite involved and there's not a lot of time between races to start tearing the car apart. So I decided just to baby it, live with it. I uh, drove very carefully, very defensively, um, held back on the jumps and consequently I didn't do too well in the last race. Um, but in all honesty, um, I don't even know where I am. Um, points wise I haven't got a clue um, somewhere in the middle I suspect the TTO2B race series I I was very lucky and I came second overall in that but the DTO2 DTO3 uh, <laughs> somewhere in the middle if I'm optimistic um, so this is now has been as you can see it's been rebuilt it's had a new chassis new gearbox uh, I turn it down I also noticed a, a crack that I'd somehow missed in the rear shock tower so it's had a new shock tower on new o-rings damper oil new wheels and new tires so it's all set to go for tonight uh, unfortunately this will be the last race that I use this after tonight I'll pull the electronics out and it will retire to um, shelf queen duty and why you may ask well the reason is on either side. Okay, so a bit of good news. Well, actually, really, really good news. Carnos RC Park, where I race, indoor carpet track, uh, about a month ago announced they are planning to open a new outdoor off-road dirt track here in Yamanashi. And to my knowledge, it's our first outdoor off-road dirt track in this area. So super, super excited about that. Um, it's scheduled to open end of June, early July. Very, very excited. I would, of course, um, shoot video um, and bring you all the track footage. So with that in mind, um, why is the, the, the DTO2 retiring? Well, starting in May of this year, the new race series is going to replace the existing DTO2, DTO3. So that's coming to an end. And the new race series is going to be called RR. As the name suggests, rear wheel drive, rear motor mount. It's gonna basically it's opening up the race to everything as long as it's got a rear rear mounted motor. So the motor's behind the rear axle, it's rear wheel drive, you're good to go. And uh, the circuit manager put together a, a list of suitable buggies and it includes everything as you'd imagine blitzer beetles wild ones uh, fox all of the two-wheel drive legendary series buggies modern day things like the geforce denova the dirt master the bbx yeah it pretty much anything goes uh so super super excited for that there are a few other regulations though um i'll put them on screen right now Uh, but anyway, yes, yeah, super excited. Um, it's been about a month since it was announced, so many of the regular attendees down at the track are starting to get together their buggies for this new race series. And as you would expect, the popular choices are GeForce Genova and the Dirt Master, with good reason. Now, if you are new here, 
um, I've got multiple videos on these uh, unboxings, build videos, review videos, comparison videos. Um, again, just look through my channel, you'll find loads of uh, content on these. So, yes, um, what am I going to run? Uh, I've been flip flopping, I'm in an houring and debating. Um, I'm fortunate in that I have quite a few buggies that meet regulations, including things like the Blitz Beat to the Wild One, the Fox, etc., all of the two wheel drive legendary series. Um, it's a tough decision. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll start with the Genova first. So, I got this right when they were originally came out in July of 2022, so it's nigh on two years. I have run this extensively. Uh, in fact, in the last year, pretty much every time I go to Carnosa, which is almost every week, I always take this and pretty much every time I run it. So it's had a lot of use, a lot, a lot of use. And it's held up. Um, I'm ashamed to say it, but I've done no maintenance on this whatsoever. In fact, to the best of my recollection, it's still running the original damper oil. All I've broken in two years of running is a front C hub. That's it. Uh, I've done a couple of mods to it. I replaced the rear wing because the stock one polycarbonate is flimsy. It just gets destroyed really quickly. Uh, if I'm running a car now, so it's got carpet, spec wheels and tires. And I've replaced the springs with stiffer ones. And that's it. Uh, it's held up remarkably well. Um, incidentally, if you follow Masami Hirosaka or GeForce on any social media, you're probably aware that they are GeForce. <coughs> Excuse me. Are currently looking for distributors outside of Japan so the plan is to make the Genova available to people outside of Japan so if you've been wanting one of these the wait could soon be over so stay tuned um, yeah excellent buggy I really like this and this is my dirt master uh, which I've been running for about a year now as it's currently set up in dirt spec uh, again, I've done nothing to this. This is completely stock safe for the rear wing. So the, the stock kit rear wing is very flimsy. It gets broken very, very quickly. It's also a pain in the butt to paint. I'm trying to get the paint in this, this narrow um, part here. So I made my own custom wing mount, which is, it's actually, it's actually the stand from a Mini Z. Um, yeah, and then mounted the javelin rear wing on just for rigidity. Um, but aside from that, it's completely standard. Now, I'm, I won't rehash what I've already talked about in previous videos. So if you're interested in comparisons on how well these do on an indoor high grip carpet track, video link in the description. Um, so anyway, I've been, I'm in an iron. What am I going to run? Um, I'm not going to run either of these. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of reasons. I plan to switch these over to outdoor dirt use so that's why they've got the original factory um, dirt tires on i was leaning towards running this but it's had like i said it's had no maintenance doing it and it, it needs a whole overhaul some parts replacing and i figured you know what i'm just gonna leave it as is i'll, I'll do so a bit a bit of many excuse me i'll do a bit of maintenance but this is now going to be the outdoor dirt buggy along with the the dirt master so i won't be entering either of these if you've watched my channel for a while you probably know what i'm about to plonk in the middle here the bbx no i'm not going to run this uh, i just literally just put out a video featuring this um this is my bbx i love my bbx just the way it is it's fantastic buggy but one thing it is not suited for in stock form is indoor high grip carpet it's just not set up to do that the circuit manager and a couple of other people are prepping bbx's and with the right modifications it can be very very competitive i mean you've got to do a lot of work to the suspension geometry dampers you've got to get it sat real low but with the right modifications it could be very quick I don't really want to do that to my BBX. I love it just the way it is. So it's going to stay as it is as an outdoor um, use only. So what am I going to run? Again, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably know what I'm about to put in this middle spot. It is, of course, the PR Racing S1 RM. I have, again, 
link, video links in the description. I've run all of these together and this is faster around the track in stock form. Um, it's more expensive to buy initially, but it is close to a high-end rear motor mount boogie as you can probably get right now. Um, very, very capable. Apologies for the noise, I'm gonna pull the body off. Sorry if you were wearing headphones. As you can see, aluminum chassis, it's got so much scope to position the battery exactly where you want. You can get a lot more weight forward. The suspension works fantastic. The dampers are excellent. It, it's got everything you need, slipper clutch. Yeah, it, right out of the box, this is the most capable. And I've ran all three back to back and with exactly the same tires on, this is quicker. So this would be the obvious choice to enter in this new RR race series held at Carnosa Park. But I probably won't run it. I may run it for one or two of the races. So there's probably going to be about six to eight races in, during the next year. Um, there's nothing in the regulations to say you have to run the same buggy each time. So I may run this at some point, but to start off with, no. Um, I'm sure a lot of people, why, why, uh, the question a lot of people's mind is, well, you've got this and it's really high spec, why aren't you going to run it? Um, I don't know myself, it's hard to explain. Um, for me, racing is not just about winning. In fact, it's not really about winning at all, it's just about having a good time. And yes, this is probably the most competitive car. Yes, this would be very fast, but at the same time, and don't get me wrong, I really enjoy running this. I really like it, I really, I really enjoy running it. And I, like I said, I probably will run it um, for one or two races, but for me, it's all, all about the prep and, you know, just about having fun, really. So I was debating and I thought, you know what? No, I'm not gonna run, run the S1 RM. So what am I gonna run? If you follow Kai City RC on Facebook and Instagram, uh, if you don't, why not? You may have seen a post that I did very recently and you're probably thinking, ah, that's what he's gonna run. I am of course talking about this, the Kyosho JJ Ultima, which I brought when it first came out, when was it September of last year? And I've just been sounding it for months. I've been lacking motivation a lot recently. Um, finally got motivated to build it. And no, I'm not gonna enter this. This has been built with one purpose in mind. I plan to enter the GeForce Cup this year, uh, held down at um, Scuba RC Park. It's, um, when is it? This year it's later than normal. Last year I couldn't go because it kind of clashed with some work stuff I had to do, but this year it's towards the end of May. Um, I'll put a link to that down in the description. So it's GeForce Cup. They hold three three races on the day. There is the Genova class. Um, this Genova would not be competitive. It needs a lot of work doing and it's specifically to set it up for a carpet track. And like I said, I'm just gonna leave this as is. So it's gonna be an outdoor dirt the use only so there's a Genova Cup which I don't plan to enter there's also an under 20,000 yen um, race again I don't plan to enter that most people run TTO 2Bs but my highly modded TTO 2B is way over the the budget limit so I'd have to remove a lot of parts and it's just it's not worth it but I do plan to enter the Vintage Race Series. It's open to anything before, made before 1990. Re-releases are fine, but the original boogie must have been released before 1990. At first, I plan to run the Super Dog Fighter. The reason being Masami Hirosaka will also be participating and he's gonna enter that race with his um, Super Dog Fighter. So I thought that'd be super cool to race against a legend with a Super Dog Fighter. Unfortunately, um, the Super Dog Fighter, again, in stock form, is not very good on carpet. It needs a lot of work. The, the left-right weight balance is very bad. The chassis has got a lot of flex. The belt tends to skip um, unless you put like an upper deck or something on. Uh, you've got to do a lot of work to get carpet wheel, modern day wheels and tires to fit. Um, yeah, it needs a lot of work in order to make it competitive. And I just, um, I just didn't want to go that far at the moment. So, I decided to run this. So this has been spec'd 
for the GeForce race. It's got the GeForce uh, motor, 21.5 turn brushes set up in it. Uh, I'm just waiting on getting some tires, carpet spec tires. So it's almost done. As you can tell, it's nothing like box art. Because I will be racing this, I couldn't really fit the stock wing. It wouldn't last very long. So I've gone with the optional, which you do get in the box, the optional hard wing stay and the javelin rear wing. Um, I may make a separate video on this uh, nearer towards the event and talk about that. So, this middle spot is still empty. What am I gonna run? Any guesses? Any guesses? I, I, I without words of exaggeration, I, <laughs> I've had everything on this bench in consideration. I, at one point, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna run my blockhead motors wild one, but I was like, mm, I don't think it stands up to the abuse. <laughs> the chassis at least anyway um i even thought about running the nova fox but access to the electronics in light is an absolute nightmare um so i just i gave up on that idea so what am i going to put on the middle drum roll please a geforce de nova what i hear you say uh, another geforce de nova uh yes um, truth be told, I picked this up a little over a year ago when I knew I was going to start running this at Carnosa. GeForce parts can be a little bit on the pricey side um, compared to Tamiya and Kyosho. Um, certain things tend to be a little bit on the pricey side. And so I figured, you know what, in my logic, it's cheaper to buy a spare kit than it is to buy the individual parts. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this can agree with that and probably do the same thing. So I ended up picking up a spare kit and I took the body out and painted that body up. And I used that for running indoors at Carnosa. I also used the wheels in the kit to mount carpet spec tires on. And when I actually broke the C-Hub, I used the spare parts from the kit to fix this Genova. But aside from that, it was pretty much a complete kit. So I figured, you know what, rather than refresh this to run on an indoor carpet track, this is gonna now be outdoor dirt use only. And I'm gonna do a fresh build of the Genova. Why? I don't know. I, I, I figure a lot of people are gonna run Genovas. It's, I don't know, group mentality, I suppose. Uh, nice to be running something that everyone else is running. Um, Lots of reasons. I just, I, to be honest, I just wanted to build another Genova. As you can tell, this has had a few option parts, not a lot, because they're just so expensive. And GeForce's option parts, um, the way they do things is a little bit weird. Like, for example, if as, this is if you want to stay on brand. Most of the manufacturers, if you wanted to upgrade for example, the screw set. So this you want you want to upgrade to a titanium screw set or a hex screw set, something like that. You would be able to buy the screw set, and it would have a uh, like for like. So the original screw set, Phillips, the titanium or hex or steel or whatever hex screw set. So you'd have one of each. For this screw, you'd have the hex replacement. Not GeForce. With GeForce, you have to buy two. 150 piece screw sets one um, flat head screw set and one button head screw set so in all you buy 300 hex screws if you want to convert your stock geforce genova to from jis uh, philips spec to hex spec uh yeah Trust me, there are not 300 screws on this buggy, uh, nothing like. So that's a bit of a weird one. Um, likewise, a few other option parts, it's like, oh, really, you have to buy all this? Um, so I just replaced, what are the, well, obviously, I replaced the dampers. But having said that, the stock dampers on this are more than adequate. In fact, they're very good. Um, the only reason I changed them is just for a bit of bling, to be honest. Um, no, no other reason more than that. Um, what else did I replace? Uh, hardly changed anything. Oh, C hubs. I went for the aluminium ones. You can get all aluminium suspension parts, but it just start the cost starts to rise quickly. So I just went with 
the sea hubs upright, the front and the rear. That's it, really. Don't think I changed anything out. No, I mean, you can get like um, suspension blocks, etc. etc. I, I didn't bother, I just went with those. Um, so, this has now been set up again. Apologies for the sound, not as bad as the other one. This has been set up for the race regulation, so it's running the square Tamiya square pin spike tires, which you kind of have to really stretch in order to get over modern day wheels. Um, what else? The GT2 motor. It's set up for a shorty lipo. Um, this has always ran um, stick lipos, as has this, but I want to be able to try and move the weight a bit forward, so I've gone with a shorty lipo uh, setup put in the optional battery tray which is very similar to the dto2 you just lift it flip it um stock one uses a sorry for the noise hey uh, oh again sorry for the noise a battery strap i did install a cooling fan i did a very very brief shakedown run just to make sure everything was working the motor doesn't run hot, it gets to about what, 45 degrees Celsius, um, but just to keep things cool, I've mounted a cooling fan. Normally, you'd put it somewhere around here, and I've seen a couple of people build fan mounts. But the problem with that is you're likely to have the fan damaged in the rear impact, and more, more so, it just adds more weight to the rear. And so I figured, you know what, I'm going to mount it here. It's blowing through the rear shock tower onto the motor. It's nowhere near as efficient as it would be if it was right next to the motor. But I'm hoping that just a little bit of cooling will help keep the motor temps um, in a nice, nice level. So there we go. That is my, what I'm calling my Genova RS spec. And this is what I plan at the moment, but my plans are always changing. At the moment, I plan to enter this into the new RR race at Connors RC Park. That race is supposed to start sometime in May, I believe. So um, looking forward to that. I will, of course, bring you footage of the event. Tonight, DTO2 race, um, I don't know. I may shoot some footage, I may not. Um, if I do, I'll, make, I'll try and put a video together. But like I said, I'm, I've not lost motivation, but I was very conscious of the fact that I was spending more and more time sat editing on a computer and less and less time actually enjoying the hobby. And so I'm trying to strike a balance. You know, I want to keep content coming for everybody, but at the same time, you know, I have limited free time and I want to just enjoy building, running, maintaining RCs rather than making YouTube videos. Um, anyway, that's enough waffling from me. I'll catch you in the next one. My name is David, this is Kai's DRC. As Glenn would say, happy RCing everyone.